are honored to celebrate the 25th edition of these lectures with a distinguished member of the Barcelona Graduate School of Economics Scientific Council, Professor Joseph Stiglitz. Stiglitz helped to create a new branch of economics, the economics of information, exploring the consequences of information asymmetries and pioneering such pivotal concepts as adverse selection and moral hazard, which have now become a standard tools, not only of theories, but of policy analysis too. The crisis has been going on now for uh, almost five years. It's been five years since the bubble broke. The financial system is not fully repaired in the United States, I mean, uh, but it's pretty well repaired. And in fact, in terms of investment, investment outside the United States, uh, outside of real estate, is basically back to normal. Before the crisis, that is to say back in 2007, uh, the American economy was fundamentally sick. And one of my predecessors at the, uh, ch as chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors wisely said uh, that that which is uh, not sustainable won't be sustained. We don't talk about austerity, but we actually have austerity. We have about more than 600,000 fewer public employees than we had before the crisis. So uh, that is obviously very contractionary. So the government has not been counter-cyclical. It's actually been pro-cyclical. Whether diversification increases or decreases uh, stability. And the strong presumption for a very long time was that diversification uh, was a good thing. You spread risk. And by spreading risk, you reduce the risk premium and, and make the system more stable. The basic point is that you get a higher probability of systemic risk and the whole system, uh, the whole system falling down. Okay, so some general results that come out of this kind of analytic framework is that full integration never pays if there are enough countries uh, in our simple model. So the idea that you, it's a good thing to be globalized turns out not to be true. <laughs> full integration never pays, and restrictions on capital flows are uh, always desirable. How do you design a whole economic system where you can absorb small shocks, but you have less systemic risk? No economist looking at Europe would say it was an optimal currency area. But the politics was a peculiar kind of politics because it created the euro but didn't really do, do what it needed to do to make the euro work. You know, one of the things we saw so clearly in the crisis of 2008 is that behind every banking system is the government. Well, think about that analogously in the current situation. Money is flowing out of the banks and countries where the government's capacity to bail out the banks is limited. And then what happens? Obviously, there's a vicious cycle. As money flows out, the, bill, the economy gets weaker and the ability of the government to support the banking system gets weaker. So it's an unstable situation. You combine that with a program of austerity, which is also dampening. You combine a credit crunch and government cut cutbacks, you have a recipe for an implosion. What you need is obviously to have a common banking system. A common banking system is not just common supervision. It's common resolution and common deposit insurance. And it has to include the small banks. It can't just be the big banks, because the small banks are responsible for SME lending. But we are, because of our policies, been leading ourselves to a waste of enormous amount of resources, greater than the waste before the crisis. Thank you so much, Professor Stiglitz, for being here. It was great.